Do I treat you the same way at home as I do in public? Yeah, we just ain't ever home. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're go- I want to get into something this morning and just share with you a little bit. Um, is this a Pentecostal church? Some of you are going like, not sure. Well, what does Pentecost mean? You know, today is what? Pentecost Sunday. What does Pentecost mean? Let's just talk about it a little bit. Now, you see, there's two methods of teaching when you're in college and in seminary. They teach you that there's a Greek and the Hebrew method of communicating and teaching. The Greek method of teaching is, uh, I'm sorry, let me start with, yeah, let's start with the Greek. That'd be best. The Greek method is lecture. That's when we stand behind the lectern and say, thus saith the Lord. You need to, and we do that. But the Hebrew method is when Jesus sat down on the mountainside and they gathered around him. So as I'm preaching, I might just stop and ask you to ask me questions. Or uh, one of the things, if you I notice some of you have technology, isn't it wonderful when senior saints have iPads? Amen. It's, it's great. When, uh, you know, in a lot of churches we go to, the seniors are, have the electronics more than the young people. And you know why? Because I can enlarge the print. I just, <laughs> right? But I ask you to do this. I heard this preacher one time say, my God, you got your cell phone out in church? I want you to have your cell phone. God might speak to you and you can either put it on Facebook or tweet it while I'm preaching what the Holy Spirit speaks to you. We're living in a different age. Listen to me. We're living for the first time ever. We've got four generations living at one time. You've got the traditionalists. That's the parents of the baby boomers before World War II. Then you got the baby boomers, which is us. Then you got the millennialists. And then you got Generation X. And we're having to minister to all of them. Generation X will be the wealthiest. They're going to be some between 30 and 40% smarter than any generation that's ever lived. They, uh, your, ch- t- your two-year-old cousin's grandchildren can already take a computer and do things you can't do. Amen? But the fact of the matter is, I want to minister across the board. And there's different things. We're dressed casual today. I like this. Uh, a lot of churches I go to will tell me, don't you come in a tie and a suit. If you do, and, and uh, I was at home and my son, you know, I've always dressed suit and tie. And, and years ago, I'd make him dress suit and tie. And he'd get through with praise and worship. And his suit and his tie would be over here and his collar would be all hanging out. Finally, Jim Talley come through one day and said, won't you let that boy be himself? And I did, and our church grew. And so now, you know what? He's preaching this morning. He has on tennis shoes, blue jeans, probably a plaid shirt. But you see, that's, that's millennials. That's Generation X. How many of you know that we need to give in some areas? There's certain things that aren't just important to us. In fact, if you want to know the truth, I'd like to find the guy that created the necktie and choke him with it. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I can't do that. But uh, those are those are things. So this morning, as I'm getting into this, I want I want to just share with you, the Holy Spirit is being poured out again. We're in a very serious time in America and in the world. Can anybody say Amen? amen. We're we're at, right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I don't need to get into the crime stats here, but I can tell you in our hometown of Meridian, uh, a town of about somewhere, I think there's a little over 100,000 people in the whole county. But the fact of the matter is, in one of our primary upscale neighborhoods, a 16-year-old wearing an ankle bracelet from being on parole walks up to a, a veteran that had just bought flowers for his wife on Mother's Day, and he's in his car, he pulls out a gun and asks for the man's money. Well, how many of you know World War II veterans don't give up their money? And he wasn't going to give it up, so he shot him three times in the chest, killed him in the car with his wife's flowers laying on the seat next to him. That's where we are, no conscience, because fathers are the ones that teach the family conscience and uh, teach the family about love. You might not know that. I found it as I began to do research. Mothers teach nurturing, but without the father in the home, the father is the one that teaches that child compassion. Passion. And that's the reason we've got to, you know what Malachi says, and stuff's coming so fast now, I, I don't want to get in about, maybe, can I invite myself back sometime so I can share some of this stuff with you? Jason's back there nodding his head. How many of you love your pastor here? Would you show him? 
I love pastors. I, uh, they're, they're great, great folks. I want to get into this. I want you to go with me. Anybody here speak in tongues? Wow. When you say speak in tongues, it gets real quiet. And what, it's a sad day when it gets quiet when you say speak in tongues in a Pentecostal church. Let's look at the history of the church of God. Okay, in the late 1800s in Shearer Schoolhouse, and we can trace the roots back to the Christian Union. We can do all of that right here in the state of Tennessee, the great state of Tennessee. The power of God fell, and the church of God was born. Actually, before Azusa Street um, in California, where the Assemblies of God have their roots. Uh, it was just a little bit before that, about a year. But the fact of the matter was there was a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit because people got tired of religion. I want to ask you what kind of church you got this morning. Do you have a happy church or do you have an angry church? Okay. If you were walking in, you're in the church. But if you were coming in like Teresa and I, how would you perceive this church? Would it be angry, happy, passive? No. What would it be? So you want to have a happy church, right? And this is a happy church. So what do you do? See, the Holy Spirit is the one that brings the joy. And as we get into this, uh, we need to understand that part of our doctrine is we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, we're not going to capitalize just on the speaking in tongues, but I want to capitalize on being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I, am, I grew up in a day, and I'm still seeing this. How many of you have ever, ever experienced a miracle? You've literally experienced a miracle, okay? Most of us in here have. Now, I'm not after the signs, I want the signs following me. And we have been, listen, how do I do this, Holy Spirit? Help me. We've, we've come through 20 years of Christian television that has squeezed money out of people. And some of it is the fakest stuff. You, and they might be some of the people you love and appreciate. But if you knew what happened behind the scenes, because of this, this always wanting money, this always acting fake, then it has put a bad name on the Pentecostal and charismatic movement. In fact, the Holy Spirit is dealing with me about reintroducing, and I'm not the only one, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to the church in the fashion that it should be. How many of you know that God's not a cosmic puppet on a string that does things when we tell him to? He's not. We're here to serve him. So uh, the last two, in fact, uh, I was getting ready for church one night. We were in a revival and, and this guy comes on the air and he says, if you send me a thousand dollars, I will send you water from the Jordan River. I told Teresa to get his address and I wanted to write him and tell him, if you will send me a thousand dollars, I will send you water from the toilet in the motel room I'm in. That's how sick things are, guys. Are y'all tracking with me? Church is being manipulated and used. It's big business. And I am hungry. I go to big churches. And I come to churches like this. Because it's all the body of Christ. Can somebody say amen? And I believe, listen, I grew up in an atmosphere of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Not only at church, but in, in my house. I remember early on as a child, I'd get ready. My dad was 65 when I was born. Some of you still have a chance. <laughs> he was 65 when I was born. His first wife died and he wanted a minister. And, and so I don't know why my, my daddy was an old farmer. I don't know why he wanted a minister. He was born in 1891 and he had a minister and my brother went to Lee University and uh, at that time it was Lee College but World War II come along and he enlisted early so that he wouldn't be drafted but he got killed in the Navy. He was the first casualty from Grenada County so my daddy's minister died. But my dad held on to his promise. He ended up his first wife died, and instead of going to a bar to find a woman, he started going to revival. And right here in Memphis, Tennessee, he found my, my mother. And he was in a, in a revival with Brother Charles Rattery. Anybody in here know that name, Charles Rattery? 
Okay, he was a he was an Italian minister here, and 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 he had a church, and they were in revival. And my daddy went to the revival, and he rolled his eyes at my mom, and she picked him up and rolled him back, and and it's been history. And when he was sixty five years old on February the twenty sixth, a bouncing baby boy come along, and this is the kind of home I grew up in. I grew up in a home where we prayed. I grew up in a home to where the television, we didn't even have a television until I got to be a teenager, and it wasn't because we were po. Everybody say po. po. <laughs> we had plenty. It was just that my dad concentrated on important things. I want you to hold your hand up and do this with me like this. Come on. Just hold it up there like this. Watch this. Now, 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 hold, uh, understand, here's the five priorities of your life. You ready? Your thumb is your apostolic member. Those of you, men, I enjoyed the piano. Every morning when I get up, I put on piano to sort of get me started. Teresa got up this morning, was in the motel with the girls. Do y'all like my little granddaughters? Aren't they precious? They're my heart. I got nine grandsons. We had to import our granddaughters from South Korea. But I'll carry on my father's name more than any of the 13 children. Isn't God good? He's awesome. But, but those priorities, that, that thumb there, you, without your thumb, you couldn't play the, the music you played or you couldn't play the music you played. And I enjoyed all of it. And I especially liked that last course. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is that's the number, that, uh, that's the member of your, like if I pick up this, book. I have to have a thumb. In the Old Testament when they captured a king they would cut off what? His great toe and his thumb. You know why? So he couldn't hold a sword. Okay? Everybody say God. That's the grasp of your life. You got it? Got your other fingers ready? Family. Family. Notice I didn't say church. Come on. Tracking with me? God ordained family. Before, he only ordained two things. He ordained family before he did the church. Okay? Long before the church. The family is the first ordained institution of worship. I got about eight messages right there. I could teach you. One, one pastor says, my Lord, how much material you got on family? I said, what about Genesis to Revelation? <laughs> God loves family. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen? Now watch this. So that's God, family. Third is church. How many of you know church is important? Pastor, church is important. It is important for us together with church family. Let me say it this way. Some of us are closer to church family than we are family. Do you know it don't get any better than family? Do you know it don't get any worse either? Think about that. So you've got God, family, church. Thirdly is friends. And last should be your career. Oh, I felt some of you. I felt that. Well, how am I going to eat? Listen, if you would serve God and do what he's called you to do, your career will take care of itself. When you got God where he needs to be, everybody say, hang 10. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's got the, some of you older folks know what that means. But the uh, uh, fact of the matter is you got to understand that God has to be first and that family has to be second. And I am not sacrificing my family to this world. Because I will stand before God and answer to him for how I raised my children and how I treated her. Is this all right? You still with me? Well, what does this have to do with speaking in tongues? Everything. The Holy Spirit should be the spirit that possesses your home. How many of you know that Jesus isn't here on this earth? You know that? Where is he? Y'all help me. Where is he? He's, a, he's in heaven, but where is he in heaven? He's at the right hand of the Father. What is he doing? Making intercession for us. How do we know Jesus got back to heaven? Because he sent the Holy Spirit. You got that? How many of you know the Holy Spirit is here? Can we stop right in the middle of this, uh, of this service this morning and just clap our hands and have a praise break that the Holy Spirit came? Hallelujah! Anybody in here thankful that the Holy Spirit came? So the Holy Spirit is the revelation of God. He's the Spirit of God. He's the paracletos. I could go into about a thousand Greek words seemingly on this. But the fact of the matter is you need to know He's your helper. He's the one that comes along. Side. And your house, your home can't make it without him. I want you to put your hand over your heart and say that with me. My house, 
my family, my home cannot succeed without the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now always remember, anytime you hear someone teach on the Holy Spirit, if they're not lifting up the name of Jesus, then they're not doing the right thing. Amen. So we want to lift up Jesus in this. Let's get into this. The word of God says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demon, demons and they'll speak with new tongues. And I could go on talking about poison whatever, but I want to uh, capture this right here. In my house, when I was growing up, I'd slip out on the front porch and daddy'd be in the cane bottom rocker. Of course, he's an old man when I was born. You know, that's what old men do. I tell you what, the rocker, uh, I'm not like George Jones talks about he don't need no rocking chair. I'm getting to where I enjoy him a lot better. Uh, but uh, I'd walk out there and I'd want to crawl up in his lap because he taught me how to quote scripture before I could read. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. If I go away to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you under myself. And where I am, there you may be also. I learned that before I could read. The reason he taught it to me was because he thought that he'd never lived to see me get grown. And he wanted, to know, wanted me to know that the word of God was in me. I can remember feeling the tears from his face hit the top of my head. Him praying for me, I put laying hands on me. But I'd go out there one day and I'd want to climb up in his lap. But before I'd get to his chair, I'd hear him speaking in this weird, 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 weird language. And I'd feel the presence of God. And I'd just freeze. And God would speak to me in my heart as a four, five, six-year-old child. Well, then one day I said, well, Daddy's busy praying. I knew he was praying in the Holy Ghost because I've been raised in this weird stuff. Y'all still with me? This is a Pentecostal church, right? Okay, now watch this. So I'd go and I'd find my mother. My mother sewed. My dad had a big farm. Mother cooked, sewed, whatever. And I'd go to her room and, and I'd go back there where she had the sewing machine. And I'd about go up to her, I remember one time. And I got to her and, and, and she wasn't sewing. She had her hands up. And she was crying and she was talking in a weird language too. And I'd stop. And again, God spoke to me. Listen, your children will not do what you tell them to do. Your children will do what you do. You got that? Now, think about this. Your grandchildren as well. Well, but these signs will follow those who believe. And one of the signs of believers is that they speak in tongues. And I, I don't have time to do all of this, but Paul said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than y'all. We seemingly tried to quiet the gift of the Holy Spirit in the church. Now, I don't know how you practice it here. I don't know if you practice it corporately or you practice it in small groups. I don't, that don't matter to me. What matters to me is that you do it. But but I believe in the power of God through the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Y'all believe with me? Now Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He wrote this. And I get so outdone with people that say, you know, well, uh, Paul said that it's better to prophesy. Oh, wait just a minute. I could get into the gift of tongues here, of tongues and interpretation and talk to you. He said, unless the tongues be interpreted. See, we take things that we want to do. And one of the reasons we don't like to talk about Pentecost or the power of the Holy Spirit is because it takes us out of control. You got that? Everybody listen to me right here. If you're a control freak, you do not like to pray in tongues. Love you. Y'all tracking with me? All right, watch this now. This is God's Word. What's the first reason that I need to have a prayer language? Well, let's talk about getting that prayer language. In Acts 2, verse 4, the Word of God says, And they were all baptized with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Or if you, have, you might have another version, it says, As uh, the Spirit enabled them, the... the, uh, the uh, Amplified Bible would say something like that. The Spirit gave them the power to. Now, how many of you has God ever spoke to in here or impressed something in your heart? Let me see your hand. Everybody in here. He's impressed. Well, that's how he will move on you. And when you get to praying and praying, it's not hard to receive the baptism. We have people, hey, I was, I was, we just come in out of camp meeting. I'm a little tired. I act tired. Say, no, you don't act it, but you look it. <laughs> don't you love it when people come up and say, see, you sure do look tarred. <laughs> tarred. Everybody say tarred. T-A-R-D. Tarred. Uh, but anyway, little boy. 
10 years old in the altar. All the adults were praying. This little boy was just really seeking God. Tears streaming down his face. I explained to him, the Holy Ghost will speak in your heart. It's, it's you to speak it out. It might, not, it might sound like Spanish. It might sound like French. I don't know what it's going to sound like. Paul says we speak with the tongues of men and angels. But I do know that the Holy Spirit will speak. I had no more than got out of him. I said, I'm going to lay my hands on you. When I did, he just went to speaking in tongues. Okay, so he comes in. Now, what does God give you that power for? What does he give you those tongues for? What does he give you your prayer language for? So you can show somebody else you got it? No. So you can say you're Pentecostal? No. He gives you that prayer language for you to be able to pray in. It is the power of God for witness. And we're going to go into what you need it for. The number one reason is it's the initial sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I still believe it is the initial sign of the Holy Spirit coming in. Everybody listen to me just a minute. When you get saved, you receive God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And you're full, right? And one, uh, one secular minister asked me, he said, how can you be any fuller? I said, it's not that you any fuller. Watch this. Are y'all tracking with me? If I put a plastic cup in a bowl, a, a, a glass bowl, and I started pouring water into that cup, and I filled that cup up, would that cup be full? Yes, it would. But the Greek word for baptized in the Holy Spirit is baptizio, and what it means is for the water to keep pouring until it flows out of that cup, and it overwhelms the cup, and the cup becomes at the control of the water. How many of you know we got enough good preachers and enough good churches? How many of you know we need places where the Holy Spirit can move? And the only way that He can do that is for us to be yielded. Hey, He'll move on you at Walmart. Right. Not necessarily speaking in tongues, but he'll move on you maybe to help somebody. I don't know. Sometimes I just go to Walmart for the show. <laughs> One of my friends sent me a picture yesterday. Big old man. He had on a blue dress. <laughs> Whiskers and all had on a blue dress at Walmart. I, come on now. I mean, if you want to be entertained, come y'all, come on. Are you with me? Just go to Walmart. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the what? The utterance. Y'all still with me? This young lady right here, uh, uh, um, I was trying to, we work with so many in the middle of the week. We go to Jacob's Well, Poplarville, Mississippi. And uh, it's a, there's 35 women there that are in rehab. And they call it a restoration center. And we work with them. They come in and we pray with them. She's got, you see those tattoos? I don't know if you can see them or not. But she is uh, really marked up here. And uh, this is a little Irish princess. And for the sake of me, I just lost her. Muriel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to get older? You, you can forget people's names and it's not a big deal. I'm seriously, there's times that I look at Teresa and call her sweetheart and she thinks I'm being affectionate. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean? Just having a senior moment. But Muriel is coming in there and she sits, and you can tell by the way she's sitting, she's sensing the power of God. They have no church background at all. Most of them have had no father in their life. And you know what happens? They get in there and they get to teach them the word of God. They get free of drugs. And, and, and some of them have been raped by the time they're 9, and 10, 11 years old. And they've been sold into sex trade and some of them have been rescued. It's just some of the most terrible things you could ever. But she's from a little Irish community and she's been misused and abused but God <coughs> healed her not only did he heal her but he filled her with the Holy Spirit and she didn't know anything about it isn't that awesome we have them come to us like this one of them come and said brother Tillman brother Tillman I feel something that we'd pray with them and we do listing prayer what we call it with them they go back out and they work in thrift stores and they come back to us and say, I feel something and I feel like I'm on fire and I and, and they're when I'm said my cheeks my face feels so red and she says it's so strange brother Tillman because I keep hearing strange words in my head She's about to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Y'all tracking with me? Uh, a little Catholic lady was in there for embezzling half a million dollars. Forty. How old was Karen, Teresa? Forty-two. Forty-two. And anyway, she's in there and uh, had a gambling addiction. How many of you know a gambling addiction ain't a good thing? I know seniors that love to go to the casino. That's between you and the Lord. But the Word of God says the fool and his money will part. <clears throat> Let me go on here. I'm meddling. Now... <laughs> 
But as the Holy Spirit came upon her, uh, she'd been there through the whole program. Jason, I asked her, I said, have, uh, have you experienced the Holy Spirit since you've been here? She said, Pastor Tillman, I've been reading about it the last week, and I want to have this experience. And so I thought, well, we'll pray her through, you know. So I grabbed her hand, and I said, Holy Ghost. She went, da, da, da. She went to speaking in tongues. In fact, they come to check because she's a real quiet lady. And she said, my Lord, I felt. She said, did I come up out of my chair? I said, no, you didn't. She said, well, it felt like it. <laughs> the power of God. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Hey, listen, I don't want to go to a dead church where there's no power of God. You're not going to reach any drug addict. Let me drop a bomb on you. How many of you know there's a community right around you that's not like you? How many of you want to see them reach for Jesus? Well, you got to change some things in here. And the first thing you got to change is you got to go after God like you've never gone after Him before. You didn't say go after I said, go after God. See, when God starts showing up, I, I, and I'm not saying this just because the church is not full. I'm like, y'all are sitting on a harvest field, Jason. I drove in here this morning, and my heart just, I'm, I'm like, Ugh. but listen, you're going to have to do some different things to get there. Who's going to show you how to do that? The Holy Spirit will. Are you tracking with me? How many of you are tracking with me? Say amen. Okay, good. But she got filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's the second reason. Tongues are for spiritual edification. Say that with me. Tongues are for spiritual edification. What does that mean? You're a spirit that lives in a body that possesses a soul. Put your hand over your heart and say that with me. I am a spirit. I am a spirit. Say I'm a spirit first. I'm a spirit first. How many of you know we're all getting old and ugly? Tracy won't do that. See there? He says, everybody, but listen, how many of you know as people get old, they get ugly? It's true. Come on now. Haley, you say what you want to. But, but, but the thing about it is your spirit gets better looking. That's right. Okay? You got, hey, sister, as much as I love you, you're rotting. Oh, yes, but my spirit is whole. You got it? That's the point. If we could understand we're a spirit that lives in a body. This is reality, folks. I don't care how many tummies you get tucks and fannies, you get whatever. But, I mean, you can look like Michael Jackson if you want to, but you're dying. We're decaying. People don't like to hear that, even those of us that are saved. I'm here to tell you, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You're looking at a fat dead man. <laughs> So, as this comes, we need to edify our spirit. He who speaks in tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. We need both of them. But I tell you what, when I get to feeling that depression thing, anybody in here ever had to deal with depression? God's probably calling you to prayer. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Word of God described depression. He said that he, his heart was heavy and sorrowful. God called him apart and he prayed. Well, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you edify the Spirit. Tracy can tell when I've been praying in the Holy Ghost and when I hadn't. Because the difference is this and this. Amen? Uh, so our spirit, what's going to be the eternal part of you? You're a spirit that lives in a body, possesses a soul. It's going to be your spirit. You'll be given a new body. Oh, I wish I had time to teach you right here. You know, we go like, we tell people when their loved ones are, 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 are laying in state, we'll tell them they're with Jesus. No, they're not. Their body's right there. Are y'all tracking with me? Their body's still there. That body's going to rot. But how many of you know that Jesus is going to give us a new body? Amen? Their spirit is with the Lord, whether you believe in soul sleep. or One guy said, I don't believe in soul sleep, but be absent with the body is be present with the Lord. Another guy said, I do believe it. I said, what difference does it make? If you're asleep, will you know it? <laughs> Come on. Oh, is this all right? Y'all still with me? Uh, oh, man, goodness, I can't believe I've been going this long. I've got to hurry. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to whom? To God. For no one understands him. Somebody says, I don't understand it. You're not called to understand it. It is your spirit. 
Are you, are you getting this? This is powerful. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. When I feel the Holy Spirit rising up in me right now. Now, now but what did I say in English? I don't know. But Holy Spirit, what did I say? Uh, would you reve- uh, Sometimes he reveals to me what I say. In fact, I just heard him say, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and we're created to praise him. Okay? I don't have time to get into this in depth. But if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is what? It's unfruitful. Somebody says, well, I don't want to do it unless I understand it. Do you, how many of you drink milk in here? Anybody here drink milk? I don't understand how a brown cow eats green grass and gives white milk and yellow butter. That keep me from eating it? No. Mm-mm. I don't know how my wife makes... Uh, 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 coconut, pineapple coconut cake. I don't understand how she can take all those ingredients and then finally it looked like a bun da dun When I walk by it, my flesh says, take it to the back porch and eat it. My soul, mind, will, and emotion says you only need a piece of it. Okay? But my spirit says you don't need to touch that coconut cake. Oh, I wish I had time to get into this. Okay, look at this one. How many of you give me a few more minutes? Uh, let me, let's take a vote. It's the Church of God. We've got to take a vote. Okay, I don't see hands. A few more minutes. Okay, I got the most of you. Did you see that, Pastor? Okay. Tongues remind us that the Holy Spirit abides in us. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Everybody say a helper. Have you ever, heard, have you ever said this? Help me, Jesus. Well, he, that's what he's here for. He's, he's the helper. We got the helper. Uh, as Sister, uh, Sister Cantaloupe says, helper, helper, hamburger helper. Hallelujah. You know, well, how many of you know hamburger helper will help hamburger? But how many of you know we need the Holy Ghost? And he will ab- abide with you for how long? How long will he abide with you? Forever. This is good stuff. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. When I was youth pastor, my Lord, that was a long time ago. Uh, uh, In fact, I just talked to the uh, granddaughter of one of the girls that was in my youth group in Grenada. But we had this guy. That was back when they had three wheelers. Uh, I mean, how many of you know when we had those skull crushers, you know? And they, uh, you couldn't ride one without turning it over. And, and this kid, he had a wreck, and he's in, they, they flew him to Elvis Presley Trauma Center from Grenada. And went, by the time I got up there, his mother was in there, and the doctor come in and said, his brain is swelling fast. He had, a, he had the imprint of a post right on one side of his head. His head's still that way to this day. And uh, he said, uh, we don't know if he's going to make it through the night. His brain's swelling so fast. And so and when the doctor told his little mother this, she just went to speaking in tongues. And the doctor said, is she all right? Do we need to call the counselor? Do y'all need a chaplain? And then I said, no, she'll be just fine. I was trying to get her separated because quite honestly, I wasn't, I was a little embarrassed, you know. You know how it is. Come on now when that, those times happen. And, and, and he comes back four hours later and he says, I don't understand understand what's happened. I really don't understand what's happened. The brain quit swelling and actually it is going down at an alarming rate. All of his vitals. And when he said that, she really cut loose and went to dancing. And he said, you sure y'all don't need somebody? I said, no, she's got somebody doctor. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And instead of dying, he lived. My God, I think, let's praise him in here for the Holy Spirit's work in the church. Oh, I love this. Holy Spirit, come today. Come and just minister. You know when you pray in English, you're probably not praying God's will. Because you know what I usually pray for? What I want. Oh, Lord. Sister Cantaloupe says, Oh, God. Lord, go out to my car. Fill it up with gas, Lord. Come into my house. Fill all my cabinets with groceries, Lord. Go out of my fit aid. Fill up the fit aid, Lord. And then when you get through blessing me, do something for them. That's the mindset of Christians in the world today. I tell you what, I want to challenge this church. 
I know you got a servant's heart to take it outside the four walls. Do stuff like you're doing today. This is awesome. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For when we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because what does he do? The Spirit makes intercessions for the saint. How? According to the will of God. I'm telling you, you pray in the Holy Ghost, you can pray some powerful things in your life. Praying in tongues stimulates faith. Jude 1.20. How are you to build up your faith? Read it with me. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, how? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Spirit. This is phenomenal. Let's look at the sixth one. Praying in tongues enables us to pray for the unknown. Have you ever had this feeling come over you like, Ooh, I feel this, yeah, just, ooh, but I don't know what to pray for. Have you ever had that happen to you? You will if you serve the Lord. You'll feel this oppression from the enemy. But you really don't know how to pray. And look, I know I love to teach on prayer. I love to teach uh, uh, the disciples' prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's really the disciples' prayer. I love to teach through that. But the fact of the matter is we need to understand that when we feel that yuck, it's time for us to pray in the Holy Ghost. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So we need to know how to do that. Praying in tongues keeps us free from being contaminated by the world. Just recent new studies, you know, they used to say that men spoke a third less uh, amount of words than women. How many of you know that men gossip too? Had one amen in the whole building. And it was a woman. <laughs> Watch this. Hunting camp. Anybody here hunt, fish? You go to a hunting camp. Golf? Anybody here golf? I'm telling you, people will lie on a golf course. Men will. And they can tell some of the biggest yarns and they talk. And then, but what we do, women, you get in a beauty shop. Those, my little granddaughters call it a booty shot. <laughs> I like it. When you get in a beauty shop, then they start gossiping about somebody. Of course, you're doing pretty good. And then they bring up something you know that's true about that heifer. So you, before you, so what you can do when people are talking about others and you feel like you want to chime in, you can just under a and a machine goody under a get that idea. It'll keep you from gossiping, keep you from cussing too. I didn't know preachers cussed till I played God with them. I'm serious. I don't use curse words. You know why? Because every word you speak manifests. Ooh, I wish I had time to teach on that a little bit. Look at this. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the what? You know what, Pastor Jason? The reason I'm here is because you and I have a connection to the Spirit, son. We're after the same things. I've only got a couple more. Praying in tongues brings spiritual refreshing. Now, let's get to the tarred part. You tarred? You ever been tarred? Everybody just say tarred. One lady told me the other day, she says, I'm woe out. W-O-E, W-O-T, woe out. Might put a U in there somewhere. I love southern euphemisms, don't you? Where do you live up there behind Mum and M's? <laughs> hey, it, it won't crack your face to smile. I promise you. <laughs> Some of you need to. Okay. But, I, I mean, people are just worn to a frazzle. I get up every day. I can't get to everything as I'm getting older. So you're still a young man. Okay. How old are you? 38. 38. You're still young, man. Really? Looking at 40. When, what does that old country song say? On the back side of 30, the short side of time. But you're still a young man. All right. So, but your spirit don't age. I tell you what I can do. I can make me a list of stuff to do when I get home. I got two acres, fruit trees. We got a country condo. Anybody here know what a country condo is? That's a double wide. I'm a registered redneck. I live in a double wide. Okay? It's paid for though, so that we could do this. We don't have, I mean, we live by what we get here. We, have, we don't have any other. But you know what? I promise God, God, I'll do whatever. 
And, and friend, I was what like Teresa said, we was very comfortable. Jason, I, I mean, I, I had whatever I needed. The church got for me, and, and that recliner was it was wonderful. You know what I'm saying? Now we'll sleep in. I think this week, how many different beds we slept in? Three. But then that's pretty tough when you get older. But my spirit, after I make all this stuff a list to do, then I, I'll get to, used to. I could do it all in a day, Jason. But now I'll only get halfway through it. And that recliner starts calling my name. Why? Why? Because the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. We need to understand your spirit don't get old. That's the, re <laughs> That's the reason some of these guys. One guy I was talking about, uh, my girth had gotten a little larger. In fact, I'm about as wide as I am tall. Jason wouldn't know anything about that. But anyway. One guy said, I still wear the same size pants I did in high school. And his gut's hanging out here. He's got his pants right here. You know, he's, he's deceived. Can somebody say amen? amen? And that's what we do to ourselves. We deceive ourselves. Y'all tracking with me? What does this have to do with the Holy Spirit? Everything. Because you're going to get tired. Isaiah 28 and 11, I know he's talking about the Syrians and captivity, the Babylonians and all of this. But how many of you know the Word of God applies? The Word of God says, says for with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people in prophecy, he's speaking here, to whom he said, this is the what? This is the what? The rest. Everybody say rest. You know what rest is? You can sit in your recliner and not rest if your mind's going 90 miles an hour. Did you know a man got locked in a refrigerated car? Uh, uh, in the, uh, I believe it was in the 40s. He got locked in a refrigerated car. He was working on refrigeration. And he got locked in this car. And, uh, and, and he froze to death. And they come back the next morning. And the temperature was 50 degrees in that car because his mind told him that he would freeze. Isn't that amazing? That's how powerful the mind is. So we need to understand he will speak to this people to whom he said, this is the rest of which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. The difference in rest and refreshing is this. You need not only to rest, but you need to be refreshed, and only the Holy Spirit can bring that to you. Can you say amen? All right? And he gives you tongues to give thanks. Sometimes I'm driving down the road, and Teresa will have on her, her, her headphones, and sometimes she don't. Sometimes I just start praying in the Holy Ghost, just giving him thanks. I have a lot to be thankful for. I get, got to meet you today. I'm thankful for that. Amen? I don't know, you'll probably go like, God, Jason, I don't know where you found him. But I'm glad I met you. I'm glad I met you. I have new friends, amen? Now let's look at the last one. One little boy, I was preaching, and I said, what time is it? He said, I don't know, but there's a calendar in the next room. <laughs> so I don't want to go too awful long, Jason. Speaking in tongues brings the tongue under subjection. I want you to think about that. Speaking in tongues, somebody to watch it. I thought I saw a watch come this way. That's so I don't want you to look at it. I'm oh, okay. <laughs> I've never had that happen. <laughs> Teresa, make note. Right here at Living Manor, a man threw a watch at me, but it wasn't to stop. It was to keep going. <laughs> you know what we do, brother? Honestly, it's, you know what we do? We'll go to a three-hour movie. And we can't sit through a 30-minute sermon. And what you take in and what you absorb is what you do. And I know it's family day. We've got our mind on stuff outside. But the fact of the matter is your pastor cares enough about you. Oh, I just sense the Holy Spirit, Pastor. To teach you the deep things of God. Without Pentecost, there would be no family. Without uh, Feast of, I wish I had time to go in the Feast of Tabernacles. Just all this stuff is so powerful. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Now, those of you that are Bible students, and I know I've got them in here. Where is the first place in the Bible that the tongue is mentioned as the captain choosing people that submitted their tongues, where would it be? Judges. Where would it be in Judges? 
What about when they reached in the water and lapped it? God told Gideon, he said, watch for the ones. See, the tongue, tongue is an interesting thing. You can't articulate without the tongue. I don't care how good you are with sign language or how good you can write. There's something about the spoken word. There's something about the spoken word. And when it's submitted to God, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome experience. Oh, I sense his presence. I just sense him. I just sense the settling of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said, well, it's not for me. I hear all this about cessation. It went out with the apostles. Ron Phillips. Does anybody who know who Ron Phillips is? He pastors Abba's house. He was he's part of a, a, a denominational movement. And he um, got filled with the Holy Ghost. They was going to kick him out. And he said, if you can prove to me in the Word of God where tongues ceased, he said, I'll turn my license in. He still has his license. Not only that, but hundreds in the Henderson, Tennessee area are being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I believe today, I, I could have done, I told, I sat down with pastor last night, and I had so much in my spirit. And I, I could have went into the basics of family. I could have done a lot of things. But God said, talk to him about the Holy Spirit. Notice I've never called him an it. He's just as real. Look, I want you to think about this as I close. Did you know when Jesus came, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know who the Sadducees were? They didn't believe in the resurrection. That's why they were sad, you see. There's no hope for them. How many of you are thankful for the resurrection? Glory to God, I am. I'll have a new body. But when the Jesus, when they come to Jesus, they said this. We know God. We don't know you. We know the God of our fathers. And Jesus turned around and said, yeah, the same God. Uh, uh, you people, you killed the prophets and they got him in trouble. Do you know the only time he was ever mean was to, rid, to religious people? When Jesus came, the religious world didn't accept him. Now that he's gone back to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit. We'll accept God the Father. We'll accept God the Son. But we will not accept Jesus. I'm mean, accept the Holy Spirit. We won't do it. Listen to this. Did you know how many were gathered when Jesus left this earth, about how many does the Bible say? We're gathered together to watch him ascend. 500. Pastor, how many? You know, he told them. See, I don't have time to go through all the scripture. But he told them to go back and tarry. Where? In the upper room. In Jerusalem, rather. Until they be endued with power from on high. How many, how many went back and tarry? Where's under 380? I'll tell you where they are. They're in all these business churches. Church is a big business. They teach you about Jesus. Some of them are on track or some not. But when you step over into the power of the Holy Spirit, you lose control of what you can do. And God takes over. I want you to stand with me.